Okay, in the previous video, we took a look at a Maclaurin polynomial for e to the x, and we came up with this thing. We came up with this ugly, ugly monster, and it turns out that it's it's not too difficult to think about what's going on here. And we said if we, I'll just do this really quickly. If we think about a a a function that can approximate e to the x, this horizontal line will do that really well at zero, but nowhere else. And then we said, well, how can we make it better? And we said, well, what if, what if just having the same function value at zero wasn't good enough? What if instead we wanted the same function value and the same slope? So they both get mapped to one, and they both have the same slope at zero as well. Okay, well, what if we wanted to get even better? Now what we're going to do is we're going to say they both have the same function value at zero. They both have the same first derivatives at zero. Now let's say they have the, the same second derivative at zero. Okay, and really the second derivative, remember, tells us something about concavity. So you can imagine this yellow line here just kind of being bent um, so that it, it has the same concavity at zero. Well, we continued to do this indefinitely, putting on all these conditions. We said, what if the, the first derivative, the second derivative, the third, the fourth, the fifth derivative, what if they were all the same at zero? And what we started to see was a pattern. And we built, we built this polynomial that can approximate a function specifically centered around zero. Okay, so the approximation of e to the x might be really good around here. Uh, it, and, and as we get further away from zero, maybe the approximation becomes less precise. So what, what is the, what does, uh, we're going to do a little bit more specific example now. What would the third Maclaurin polynomial look like uh, for e to the x? Well, the third Maclaurin polynomial is going to look like the following. We're going to evaluate f of 0. And we just throw 0 in for e and we get 1. What is f prime of 0? Well, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And that evaluated at 0 is 1. 1 times x is x. What's the second derivative of 0? Well, hopefully I don't have to do this too often or too 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 much longer because the second derivative, the third derivative, the fourth derivative, so on and so forth, are all going to be e to the x. And when I evaluate them at 0, they're all going to be 1. So this third term, then, is going to be 1 over 2 factorial, which is just 2, times x squared. And finally, the third one is going to be 1 times 1 over 3 factorial, which is just 1 sixth, times x cubed. Now. What exactly is this doing? Well, you can imagine uh, what a third degree polynomial will look like up here. And let's go ahead and, and just picture this. I don't know if this is exactly what it's going to look like, but maybe it does something like this. Okay, it's going to do this, and maybe it, it bends up here. And now you can see that this last graph that I just drew is starting to resemble e to the x, at least at least to the right of 0. Over here, we're still off a little bit. But the closer we get to 0, the better the approximation is going to be. OK, and the idea is, is uh, adding more and more terms to get a better and better approximation. Now, to reinforce this, let's go to the calculator. And uh, what you, you can see what I've done here. I've entered e to the x. I've entered in um, this line right here. Let me see if I can get to it. This line right here is going to be my third Maclaurin polynomial. So you can see that I've just entered it in all the way up to uh, n equals 3 right here. Now if I graph that thing, if I graph it, this is that cubic polynomial that I just found. Now let's go ahead and put e to the x right on top of it. And I'll turn e to the x on. I will graph it. And uh, you can see it traced it out. And it actually looks pretty pretty good over here. Again, we're still way, way off over here. Um, but the closer we get to 0, you can see that the, the cubic polynomial and e to the x are virtually the same. And the further out we get, the less accurate we get. Uh, again, to, to reinforce this, you could always go to the table and try some values. Well, we should be really accurate at 0, shouldn't we? And we plug 1 in, or 0 in, and we get back 1 for each function. This first uh, this first column right here is what it should be. This is e to the x, and this is my approximation. I should do it over here. This is e to the x, and this is the approximation. 
Okay, you could get to a little bit to the left of zero if you want and see how it starts to change a little bit. Um, here's what e to the x should be, and here is our approximation of it. The further away from zero you get, though, to the right, you can see that, that the approximation is now um, changing a bit. Okay, we're getting off a little bit. So um, what would happen then if we did uh, the seventh the seventh Maclaurin polynomial. Okay, well here it is. I've already typed it in. I'm going to um, select it. And now if I graph it, and give it a minute here. It's a little slow. Okay, you, you can actually see, it's hard to see over here, but you could see that we actually got a little bit more accurate over here. Okay, so you can, and you can see it's still graphing it there. There it stopped. Um, but you can imagine if we continue to add terms to this thing that this little this little wing of the the polynomial is going to get per pushed further and further over and we're going to really really look like e to the x um, in this general vicinity if we go out far enough to the left and to the right um, it might get off a little bit but close to zero it's going to be really really accurate so there you go uh, a McLaurin polynomial for e to the x and a uh, little calculator work to, to help you out there. So I hope that helped. We'll see you in the next video.